Once again, we are here in the Porsche area at the 40th Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix at Shenley Park 2022. I'm standing with the Events Grand Marshal, a, uh, a manager, a VIP, I should say, with uh, Porsche USA in Atlanta and a former Pittsburgher Ray Schaefer. And again, welcome back to Pittsburgh and what a, what a great show you guys have. Well, you guys built it with your volunteer work. I'll tell you, it's incredible to see what it's become over the years. It's an honor to be here with you, Ted. Thanks so much for having me. So uh, we're standing by a couple of Porsches that represent a couple of uh, different uh, uh, iterations of the Porsche and developments and uh, styles over the years, and this is a, a 356. This is the car that when you say classic Porsche, most minds will go to this. And that's because it's the first model to ever carry the Porsche family name. Started producing them by hand in 1948 and of course produced all the way up through 1965, at which point in time the car was replaced by what really has become the icon of the Porsche model line, and that is the 911. Went from a flat four-cylinder air-cooled, like the 356 sitting here next to us, yep. to the flat air-cooled six-cylinder model, like the Violet car that's uh, with the Cabriolet top open. Uh, you know, that is the final iteration, if you will, of the air-cooled 911, the 993 generation. Look over here and, uh, and see it, because I have trouble identifying, uh, you know, a, a, an air -cooled uh, 911 uh, from a uh, or distinguishing from a yeah. from a later liquid cooled one. Now, how do you know that this is the last of the air cooled? Ones? Well, the body style of the car is distinctive. It is a what we call the 993 generation of the car. These are not by any way in us any type of numer numerical order. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the car we have today is called the 992. But this one preceded that by about uh, 30 years. Nevertheless, the 993 is known as the last air-cooled generation of 911 models. Uh, it's just the style of it. The, the familiar look with the vented hood in the front, um, the windshield, the dashboard, where basically you're, you're right up under the windshield. Uh, all these were design cues that carried from the mid-60s all the way up to the late 90s. When the replacement for this car, the 996, came along, that was the first time a complete clean sheet paper redesign of the vehicle ever happened. Porsche is famous for its evolution mechanically, but you might say that going from air cooling to water cooling was rather revolutionary for the 911 at the time. Certainly revolutionary for, for Porsche. Everybody else was doing, had been doing liquid cooling for years, but I guess there was, um, it be almost became a cult after a while that Porsches were air cooled engines. You know, without a doubt. I mean, this this comes out of necessity from from the uh, 1930s, of course. Ferdinand Porsche famously involved with developing the Volkswagen Beetle, the people's car, and taking that technology into the 356 that we started looking at. Really, uh, a lot of hot rod performance parts in the very beginning, of course, eventually turned to bespoke Porsche designed and engineered parts for those early cars. Uh, and yeah, just continuous evolution of it. You know, they love a challenge, and without a doubt, keeping that going as long as we did into the 1990s with all the um, emissions regulations and everything, they did a beautiful job with that. And I think that because Porsche has long been involved in seriously in motorsports, uh, and I think, uh, I suspect that uh, Porsche racing cars pulled Porsche into, into liquid cooling, because if you have a really highly tuned engine, you really need very efficient cooling. Well, and of course, the, the flat six air-cooled motors that started with the 356 and evolved into the 911s, the 911 engine, especially the two-liter flat six, that pretty much powered the prototype development through the 1960s, cars like the uh, 906s, the 907s, the 908s, and of course, famously into the 912, uh, 917s, which were 12-cylinder, flat 12-cylinder air-cooled racing engines. The reliability that they got out of those cars just absolutely phenomenal. And of course, by the time the 1980s rolled around, by the time we get to the 962s and IMSA GTP competition, those were single turbocharged versions of basically the engine that's in this car. Still air-cooled? Still air-cooled. Uh, Water-cooled heads later on in development, but air-cooled blocks. Amazing, amazing uh, engineering through the years uh, and, and evolution, because you can see the f earliest of the Porsches, the 356s, and you can look at the newest 911s, and you see the family. Absolutely. The DNA is in the design, the high headlight peak with the low hood line, the shoulders and the back. Uh, it, it's just a distinctive look that you really don't need a badge on the car to know what it is. It's Porsche and uh, Porsche year at the uh, Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Ray Schaefer here with Ted Sawyer.